Got Your Back Podstream is brought to you by Kinprint. For all your company's promotional needs, they do it all. Apparel, promotional products using the highest quality brands. They do logo design, signage, and printing. Kinprint will promote your brand with excellence. Visit kinprint.ca. Oh boy, Oiler fan. Oh boy. Another loss. This one probably a little tough to swallow for the fan base, given they had a lead and they seem to have brought the right stuff to the rink. But the wheels came a tumbling off. Welcome to Got Your Back, post game live stream edition. Jason Strudwick standing by. We're going to break the whole thing down. As always, Got Your Back brought to you by our amazing title sponsors, Sherwood Buick GMC. Their Friday the 13th event was really something and a good indication why they have been Canada's number one GMC dealership for the past five years. Sold over 50 cars. That's because the pricing and the process is top notch, right? Go check out Sure Buick GMC. Mention that Got Your Back podcast sent you. And uh, not only will you receive specialized pricing as a bonus, you'll also get three free ultimate detail packages. Who doesn't love having their car detailed? new or used vehicles that's on visit phil and the crew in sherwood park or online at gmcpod.com coming to you from the long shots newly redesigned studio all game days are all day happy hour specials five dollar long shots lager and you might have needed about seven of those to get yourself through the third period after what we saw tonight struds the record one four and one just one win in their opening six games buddy what's the worst start to the season you can recall and how miserable is life when the season starts this crappy you know it's funny i don't i don't really remember ever having this kind of a start i'm sure i did uh you know i wasn't exactly on stanley cup winners every year so i must have but I, I don't remember a team starting with this much fanfare, this many expectations, st- like stumbling out of the gate like we've seen. And it's it's almost every part of their game that is it is showing different, you know, just issues or you know struggles as we look at these first six games. Sugar, it's it's you know for people, a lot of people haven't picked as a Stanley Cup champion, and then I, it's hard. What do you grab onto? What do you? Okay, well they've got this going. Well this is going well. Like that's. That is, I think, probably the hardest part for Oilers fans, not just tonight, but you know, in these through this first, what is it, 10, two weeks of the of the of the season. Pretty unreal. I d- like did not see this coming. Didn't know that they would start fantastic, but definitely didn't view this kind of a start yeah. coming. We're gonna break down some of what we saw, a lot of what we saw tonight, and then in the big picture, some of what the struggles are. There's some defensive zone stuff going on. That I, uh, there's a little bit of confusion that's happening. We're gonna do this in a couple of sections, right? By the way, we are live streaming on Twitter and YouTube. So mm-hmm. for the very active stream that we have going, uh, Steve Taylor is working <laughs> the controls back in Kelowna, and he's gonna be gathering the best of it. We'll do a nice hearty "Ask Us Anything" segment right at the end. So keep sending in your comments, and we're gonna get to those. In our breakdown segment, first, we're going to talk about what the hell happened in that third period, because that third period could be a podcast on its own an entire hour. (laughs) We're going to really dig in on the third period, and then we'll save some of the other storylines on the night, New, Javander Kane, maybe Evan Bouchard, a few other things in our takeaways segment. So we're going to break this down over two segments, and then we'll have Struddy's World, and then Ask Us Anything. So let's get to the breakdown. Brought to you by Mr. Dirk, the iconic men's clothing store in Edmonton. Founded back in 1939. You know how you last that long? You have great products, you have great service, and you become part of the community. And that's what Mr. Dirk has done. Their location, just off White Avenue, 102nd Street, is beautiful, fantastic, high-end suits, pants, shirts. If you want to elevate that part of your wardrobe, Fantastic casual wear as well. Strongly recommend you visit MrDirk.com to see all they have to offer or go visit Dan Sterling and the amazing staff at Mr. Dirk. Uh, Okay, Struds, we're going to break down the goals kind of one by one, but let's set up the situation heading into the third period because this was one of those scenarios where it was just, it was on a tee for this team to round the bend and turn a corner and they just didn't. 
at the end of well, since the time Eckholm has come over, and then after the loss to Vegas through the summer, through training camp, you know, up to this point, they've talked about playing with the lead going to the third period. Classic setup. You know, your goalie does bails you out. You know, the orders start well, bails them out in the, the second period, does Campbell. Three, two, okay, guys. All we got to do is just let's just lock it down here. Let's play our game, keep them to the outside. We know that the one the one line's on fire. Let's just keep them to the outside, let's do our thing. So this is what they've been talking about, what they've been wanting to do, and they're unable to get it done. And they and and I think what was it, five goals rattled off by the wild. So if 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 you're looking at something that they were they wanted to show that they could do and accomplish today was a by their standard a massive fail a failure to get it done as far as protecting the lead going to the third period what we're not going to do is indulge in a bunch of but they didn't have mcdavid tonight we're not going to go there because this game was there this team brought the right stuff to the arena yeah. tonight they were competitive as hell that was as heavy a game as they'd played all se all season and they were right in this thing. So that was there to be had, Connor McDavid or not, right? So let's move to the third period. They enter that third period, Struds, and they got themselves a one-goal lead, and all hell breaks loose right at the start of that period. They get caught in the Caprice off tilt to whirl uh, The 3-3 goal by Hartman, let's start right there. Just an unbelievably talented play off the wall by Kaprizov to buy some space you know pulls away from Nugent Hopkins but what did you see after that down mm -hmm. at the net well it starts with Nugent Hopkins not protecting the middle of the ice he overchecks to the the far side of the puck to the wall side and it was a really nice place but moved by uh obviously uh, Kaprizov so give him credit then the puck he it's kind of a a lucky pass, although when you're talking with skilled players, it's probably unfair to call it lucky, but it goes right on to the uh, um, to uh, Zuccarello. And then uh, that is tap, tap back. You know, Darnell goes down to kind of take away the shot. You know, you probably could have recognized it probably wasn't going to be a shot. There's going to be a pass and maybe take away that passing lane. And the puck goes right in front. And so one timer by Hartman, no one's standing there, right? It's a bang bang play. Um, this one, I'm a little bit more inclined to let it go because I think it's a really skilled play by Kaprizov that sets this whole thing up and everyone's sent reeling after that. 38 seconds into a period where you yeah. have to get off to a good start. I agree with you. It was probably the, the least egregious of the ones we're going to discuss here, but definitely Nugent Hopkins needing to be more aggressive on that wall, being more protective, recognizing who you're out there against. Tough play there. That came at, what, 38 seconds in? A few minutes later, the 4-3 go-ahead goal. Mini just wouldn't go away, and they finally pull ahead. Uh, hard rim around the boards, and Evan Bouchard, I watched it three separate times. I know he's a laid-back guy, Struds. That's just being too lackadaisical on an important puck. That's just being too laid-back and not bloody well making sure. Picking up a hard rim on your backhand is really hard to do. You know, anyone who's played hockey, they they know that. And anyone who hasn't, I'm telling you, it's a really hard pickup. Um, but that being said, you have to know the moment, right? Where where am I at? It's a tight game. Um, you know, we can feel many was coming on, especially I thought the second half of the second period, many was coming on. They just scored a goal. You know, the worst case, the worst thing you can do is mishandle that puck. The best thing you do is just kind of swallow it up and keep it in the corner. Um, he obviously wanted to make a play with it and you can tell as, as soon as it hits a stick, it's a grenade and it's off, it's off and it goes right behind the net. And now you've got a big problem because everyone's assuming he's going to get it. It's kind of moving into place to get that. He doesn't do his job, but now it's just an absolute gong show and it's uh, it goes behind the net up, bang, bang, goal before I even know it again. You know, we can, I guess, look at the, the coverage, but you're expecting your your skilled defenseman to, to pull that puck off the wall and make a play. So that one, I think, two wears um, pretty pretty clearly. I would agree. But notable that, again, it's Nugent Hopkins' line out there on the ice. And yeah. Struds, you know, there's more to come here. But I'll just mm -hmm. let you quickly run down the the stat we discussed off yeah. air about Nugent Hopkins. It's it's mind-numbing. Yeah, you know, there's high event nights and, and you know, I, I I was really watching Bouchard because I, I tend to watch the D-men more and I'm like, God, this guy's been on for every goal. And in the end, he was on for three goals, four and five goals against. I'm like, wow, that is, that's a high event night, 11 goal yeah. night. 
And then I scan down further. Nugent Hopkins on for three, four, and six against. That's a nine goals out of 11. You're either cheering or, or feeling shame. That is a really, really, really high event night. I'm not sure what the record is, but if you're on for nine goals and six of them and three, and I, you know that's that's a rough night. So I think that, and and that was crazy. Shogger is his line may score two goals. Yeah, Fogel scored two, uh, four. And yeah. his line mate scored too. Crazy, crazy night. So, yeah, that is – it's that combo of Bouchard and Nuge, it wasn't working tonight. Okay, uh, Erickson Eck gets the uh, goal that puts him up by two. And, again, Nuge and Hopkins line out there again. This is where I want to focus on this box plus one and some new systems that they're implementing in and around their net – it seems like there's a bit of confusion. On the previous goal, Nugent Hopkins is pla you know plastered to the post, and we yeah. often see a center right off the post in that system, right? And he's kind of supposed to read off where the D-man goes. And then on the next one, Nugent Hopkins pulls away from the post, and there's nobody at the net. Now, the, the entire front of the net is vacated on the 5-3 goal. Now, I don't know the way Woodcroft is. I don't know exactly where everybody's supposed to be in that system, but I sure know there's supposed to be not nobody standing yeah. in front of the net. Like Erickson Eck had way too much space. And that leads us to believe there's some wonkiness going on on the, the coverage in and around the net. They're getting like lost in the rotations a little bit. As the, the other team is cycling and rotating it around, the orders seem to be getting a little bit lost in that. Well, I've alluded to this. That there's going to be some challenges moving from one system to the other. You know, And, and Darnell Nurse, you asked them flat out if that was a problem. And I think there is because when you're under stress, you kind of revert back to what you know. Um, so if if you have five players on the ice and three do the new system and two do the previous system, you've got a real problem. If all five do the old system, you're in good shape. If all five do the new one, you're in good shape. But when you have half and half or a hybrid, it really creates problems. So in this play, you know it actually goes from Echo or um, Erickson Eck behind the net. Over to Maroon, who just walks up the wall, and three Oilers, the two D-men and, and the center, all follow, move up away from the net, all three. And then Maroon looks back. He's like, oh, my God, this guy's wide open behind behind it. And he slides it back, and Ekholm makes a really nice move. I, I, I give the guy credit. I didn't actually know he had that move in him, but he made the nice move and goes far side, so a nice play. But I, my understanding of this type of play is that it's kind of always a box plus one if you can envision that. So let's say that the left defenseman goes to the corner. The D-man kind of takes the – sorry, the center takes the spot where the D-man was. So you always have that – post. That Yeah, well, yeah. So now the puck goes up the wall. Uh, you know, so Darno kind of is stretching out there. You know, I think – I believe that Nude should probably fold underneath and kind of protect him or CC move over and kind of protect him. But you can't have all three moving up. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you got to protect the middle of the ice. You got to protect in front of your net. So, you know, it's I, I think that's an unclear area for for Nuge, and obviously the two D are unsure of what's going mm -hmm. on because for for it to go from pretty decent coverage to a breakaway uh, within seconds is is probably not the system Jay's trying to run. Six four goal. So the Oilers get the power play goal. Finally, a third period goal from Evander Kane completes the, the Gordy Howe hat trick. And then playing it four on four, it's a six four goal there from Hartman. And this is one Jack Campbell is definitely going to want back. And he's definitely up there on the list of, you know, mistakes on that goal. But the part that I didn't like is your four on four. And I thought Evan Bouchard's pinch up ice was way too aggressive at four on four when he didn't have help. And he would have known he didn't have help because the guy had the jump on the forward that would have been one of the guys in the foot race back. I thought it was way too aggressive at four on four for him to hop up. <laughs> well played, sir. I've, I've, that's why I have my notes here. Um, Campbell's got to make that save. I, I think that's a save he has to have. He had a good night, but that's a save he has to make. Um, but when you're talking about pinching, these are the choices. You pinch when you can 100% get the puck or you don't pinch. That's, that's the two options, really. That's, that's really all you have as a D-man. If you and, and Bouchard and and I believe I want to say the empty netter, he was also in between. You know, he wasn't all the way in and he wasn't all the way out. So you're 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 what coaches will call in your no man's land. 
right? You're you're not you're neither getting to the guy nor nor stopping him. So you're 100 correct. He's got to, you know, identify earlier and move up on that guy, or just so play it soft and then just accept the rush um, because it really makes it hard on on everybody else. And then there's a foot race, and then like I said, the puck chips over Middleton, and um, saves got to be made though. Uh, if we go back to the one one goal. I mean, we hate to pile on, but we're talking about mistakes here. Did he need to have the stick yeah. tied up in front of the net there on the Rossi goal? Do you recall that one? Uh, oh, I, oh, I recall it because uh, I got about 10 texts <laughs> from buddies who listened to the pod. And they're like, is that what you're talking about? I'm like, yeah, that's it. So, you know, the, 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 it's a point shot. And, you know, Bush, he, oftentimes he finds himself in the right place. And that's what's, I think, so um, frustrating, but also very positive because he's there. It's just you got to tie up the stick. You can't allow, especially a smaller man, to tip a puck past you when you're just standing there, right? So yep. that's a really hard one. And again, it's it's so it's such a basic skill. You just lift that stick, um, and it does. You know, it, it does feel like I'm all I'm, I'm only talking about Bouchard these days. But you know, when it, when it's that clear um, that that's yeah, that's I don't think that's on us. But I don't think we're yeah. being predatory here, man. Yeah. We got a job yeah. to do. <laughs> Well, we're breaking down what went wrong and a bunch of his stuff went wrong. Yeah, he he and Nuge had a high event night, right? And you look at it, you know, he he scored that early goal. Um, you know, he made some decent passes and and, and it's just it it's right now he's high event in both ends. And and that's something that I'm sure the coaching staff wants to kind of get on top of. Um, but it it, it just it's just you know, it's just shift after shift after shift. And it's, it's, I, I honestly think they have to downshift them. I actually wrote in my notes, why not get Broberg in more ice time? You know, Broberg played 10 minutes, I think, or it might be off. Maybe it's just under 10, but you get into the third period. And with all due respect to Vinny Darnay, why not have Broberg out there? You know, yeah. a little bit more mobile. I thought, I thought, Broberg had, by the way. Yeah. I thought Broberg actually had some nice moments carrying the puck. Totally like agree. I, I th- I think I would have beefed up his ice time and for sure brought Vinny's back a bit, not because of what he's doing, but just at what Broberg brings. So we're a little off track, but that's kind of the the, the Bouchard. Treat. Okay. So that's running down all the goals against and what went wrong. Bottom line, they wasted a hell of a period from Jack Campbell. Probably the best period he's he's had as an oiler. He was phenomenal in that second period. We'll go to the stream here, the YouTube mentions, because there's lots of action coming in, and we'll get to more in our Ask Us Anything segment. Bray, uh, Braden Johnson says, the biggest disappointment is everyone's lack of defensive awareness and effort. We talked about that. You have a friend and teammate in Campbell put in a ton of effort over the offseason. You leave him hanging out to dry again. So Campbell held the line in the second period, played fantastic. He was not without his mistakes, but just a wasted effort from a guy that was just battling at a high level for them to come out like that in the third period. Yeah, after the second period, I'm sure someone would have said, guys, Soupy's just, he's hes holding us in this thing. Let's lock it down for him in the third. Like that, I, I, I don't think I've ever been in a dressing where a goalie played that well in the second and kept you in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and And no one said that. And generally, that's like, hey, let's get our asses in gear and tighten up defensively. And it went the other way. And I go back to my yeah. original comment, Shogger. Like, this this is exactly what they wanted to prepare for, and they wanted to get done. And they weren't able to, even when their goalie was doing a pretty good job. Uh, you know, he gave up seven goals, well, I guess six only. But it didn't feel like a six-goal like night for Campbell. I thought he actually had a good night. But the problem is he only had 31 shots, six goals. <sighs> That's a rough one, but or I guess it'd be only 30 shots, actually, because one was an empty netter. We'll go to the Weiss Johnson sound box here. Heating and air conditioning specialist. The snow has arrived. Did you get in a nice warm vehicle today in your garage? My wife did. If not, it's time to get that garage heated up. Installing a garage heater will also help if you have rooms over the garage that are always a little cooler. So be winter ready and visit Weiss-Johnson.com. Weiss Johnson. Quick clip from Jack Campbell uh, before we wrap up uh, the breakdown segment. Here is oh, – which button is it? I'm going to hit the wrong button. I've got a list. Here's Jack Campbell post game. I guess just disappointed feeling in here. Um, you know, we scored enough to win. They made some really nice plays and capitalized and 
of course, I'd love to uh, make some more more key saves for the guys and, um, you know, get two points. But they made some good plays. I got to go back to the tape tonight and, and watch it and uh, see what adjustments I can make. And, you know, as a unit, I know uh, we can tighten things up, too. He made a couple of mistakes, but played well enough for his team to have won that game. And uh, that's a, a waste of a night where Jack Campbell showed up ready to go. And frankly, a waste of a night where everybody showed up with the right stuff. Man, they just spit the bit in the third period, something fierce. That's got to be frustrating. We'll hear from Jay Woodcroft. We'll hear from Warren Fogle in our next segment. And we're going to break down a whole bunch of other elements of the game. What's still to come, Struds? What are what topics we got? We got a Vander Kane's night. We've got, we got sound from the players. Um, man, we've got... There's, there's like this crazy list of stuff to break down yeah. from this game. Um, anyways, lots more discussion to come and then Struddy's World and Ask Us Anything. So we will be right back. Stick around. Hey, everyone. It's Kelly here from United Sport and Cycle. The wait is over. United's annual Hockey Day sale is finally here. Save 20% off on select CCM and Bauer skates. Save 35% off on all Bauer and CCM Pro Stock sticks and save up to 25% off on select Bauer and CCM equipment. And for you goalies, save up to 20% off select Bauer, Warrior, and CCM goal gear. Trust the experts at your home of hockey for over 95 years. United Sport and Cycle. Are you ready to elevate your moving experience? Trusted for over 100 years, Ferguson Moving and Storage are your partners in relocation, ensuring your journey is smooth and stress-free. And say goodbye to surprises with Ferguson's transparent flat rate pricing. Contact them now for a free moving quote and use the promo code FERGUSON to receive $100 off your next move. Visit fergusonmoving.com and let them lift your expectations. All right, time now for takeaways brought to you by Redefined Health, where they specialize in total body and mind wellness from chiropractic and massage care treatments to acupuncture, soft tissue therapy, nutrition, even an on-site registered psychologist. They take care of the whole unit. Redefined Health is here to help you get well and stay healthy for a lifetime. Visit Dr. Tyler Fix, best name in the business, Visit redefinedhealth.com. I remembered three too many men penalties in one game. How have we gotten to this point in the podcast and not mentioned it yet? That's like, that's how much crazy crap there was going on in this game, Struds. Three too many men penalties. I get it. New line combinations, 11 and 7. It can be tricky. But I'm sorry, man. That's, that's amateur hour stuff. Three in one game. Yeah, so I, I checked my notes and I came across that as well. So when you, when you have new line mates and maybe um, you know a little bit, of, little bit of tension on the bench, you've got to double check. And the best way to do it is say, okay, you know what? I'm taking whatever dry saddle. You take Kane and you take Janmark. So everyone knows specifically who they're taking. You know, I think it was the last one where two players jumped on the ice side by side and they skated out and pretty much ran the same route on the ice to get open and get the puck. I mean, it, it, I'm not sure how that happens. You know, it's it's um, there has to be communication. There, there, you quite frankly, when you're struggling and you have change like that, there can never be enough communications to let everybody know where you're at, what we're doing, who I'm taking, what's happening. And so one is okay. You know what? Hey, the new it's it's a little bit different. Two is like, whoa, okay, guys, we got to get our ass yeah, in here. Yeah, tighten it up. Three here. is is quite frankly, you know, unforgivable. It just it just can't happen because. The coaches were on the bench. They're talking. They're letting you know. Um, and I, I, I just, I couldn't believe it when the third one happened. And the way it happened to see two players jump on beside each other, man, it's like the Hansons seeing them skate out there, staying it tight. Back to the East Johnson soundbox. Here's Jay Woodcroft. Longer clip. He explains a lot. See the third period. You give up that many uh, amount of goals. It's uh, far from ideal. Uh, lots, to, lots to clean up there. And. Um, you know, I thought there were moments in the game that we could have handled better, um, and not just de defensively, certainly defensively. But you know, we had a five-on-three power play early where we could have uh, converted at a um, you know better clip that I, I felt 
that was an important juncture in the game. You know, we're up to one uh, end of the first period. We win a face-off clean. We can execute a whole lot better in that situation as well. I thought our players, um, you know, gave us what they had tonight. But in the end, we had struggled to contain their uh, their big line in the third period there. And we were made to pay. Uh, yeah, that power play, uh, five on three, obviously would have liked to have converted there. You know, it's a couple of games where energy levels are being sapped a little bit by power plays that aren't that aren't necessarily being effective. Uh, what stood out to you there by Woodcroft? By the way, he wasn't asked about the too many men on the penalties, or we would definitely be running that clip. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about the power play, and I have my notes here. They had I, – I thought that the passing was off tonight. You know, how often do we have to see a player, like, check a pass and kind of settle it down before he can make another pass? You know, that was, that was across the board, the five guys. Kane – um, I thought, you know, he was doing his best, but he's not a distributor like Connor McDavid, right? Then you got Leon, who's now got to pick a pass up out of the air and knock it down. It was just all, it was just a little bit off. Um, the skills there, but it's just obviously not having Connor makes a difference, but it shouldn't affect the passing. And I think that's where, you know, those guys have to kind of get that on track and smooth that out. Cause even if it's just a fraction of a second, that, that fraction of a second is enough for a player to get in the spot of, uh, uh, you know, getting into lane or getting a stick in the lane or whatever it is. And, and many is pretty good penalty killing group. Um, so not the team that you can have that, that, that slight bobble of the puck shogger. Yeah, no, I agree. Evander Kane, all eyes were on him because of, well, whatever you thought about the comments he made in the interview with Scott Oak, he put all eyes on himself and, and that's fine. Delivers with a Gordy Howe hat trick, right? Steps up for a teammate that took a tough hit. Yeah. You know, ends up with the early assist and then scores the team's first third period goal of the season. I mean, and played a heavy game. He was a menace out there. You know, I know it's a loss and we're not going to focus on a ton of positives, but Evander Kane arrived tonight in a bit of a different way and he put up after the things that he had to say. Yeah, you know what? It's it's very impressive, that is. And they need him. Like, they need this guy to stand up when Connor's out. Like, he needs to be noticeable and notable uh, in, in both ways as he works his way through these games. And, you know, he was physical. He was running that that Farber all night long, running guys over, um, you know, not taking crap. Like, I, I thought he was really being a leader and kind of showing the way. Um, so I would keep riding him. If I was Jay, I would keep riding him. You know, he was at 19 minutes. Uh, he was in all three phases of the game. Uh, I think that bring, brings him energy. Um, and like with Connor out now, you've, you you need someone to stand up and then do it. And I think that he's the guy that, especially if you can get him going now, it helps when Connor comes back. So um, well done by by 91. I thought he had a really strong game. Warren Fogel making a nice case for himself to you know keep getting some offensive looks. And that shot of his, it, it, this is part of why I think he's a, a frustrating player for other fans, Struts, because – between that shot that he's got and between those legs and that engine that he's got, he should be able to be a more impactful player more often. Then he has nights like this, and you're like, man, where is that? You know, 40, 50% of the rest of the time. Really strong night from him, something that this team needs more of. He had a real impact in this game. He did. I, I think that his hands, though, aren't, aren't at the same level as his skating and strength. I, yeah. I just don't, I don't see him there. Like, I don't. I th I see him as a fifteen to twenty goal scorer. I, Which is I don't still pretty damn good in this it's, league. It's good. It is good, but I mean, that's a long ways away from twenty five to thirty five, right? Like I yeah. think I have more of Vander Kane in that north, definitely north of twenty five. Um, but I don't, I don't have Fogel there. But it doesn't mean he can't be. You know, you can have a great career year, if, and and the Oilers need him to have a career year, obviously. But I just. You know, he 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 makes a difference when he's out there, right? And the way he's skating and playing. And for him to get a couple tonight, I thought that was big as well. So he had a you know, two guys, two wingers get, you know, three goals out of the four. Uh, I think that was really positive because last game it was two D-men that scored. So you have three of your last five goals are from D-men. Reminder that Struddy's appearance on the podcast tonight without Brownie here uh, is brought to you by our good friends over at Kinprint. It's a local company, family owned with decades of experience, feeling any and all of your promotional apparel and embroidery needs. Check out their website at kinprint.ca. can also help you with branding, logo design, the whole bit. So if you're a new business, if you're an upstart and you need some creative help, that's kinprint.ca. Notables. Probably should just create a segment called Notables. I have one, 
And this is just following up. Did you hear Jay Woodcroft's availability yesterday before the team flew? In it, he was asked what he needs to see more of from Ryan McLeod. And one of the first things that he said was he needs to win more faceoffs. Right? We've watched this plague a good young center for a long time. And Struddy had himself a night in the faceoff circle. You know a player will hear that. You know he's probably heard it behind the scenes too. Notable an eight and two night from Ryan McLeod in the faceoff circle on the heels of some criticism from the coach. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it would be rare for a coach just to drop a bomb on you without having told you previously. personally. Yeah. Like that would be pretty crazy for, for oh my God, Shogger has just been brutal in the face off dots. And he hasn't told you that at least once before. Like it, I'd, I'd be blown away. So, yeah, and you know, good for him. I think it's, it's one time is great. Now you got to, you know, now you got to do it. You got to keep kind of trying to make it happen, trying to make it to, Put it together. Well, and you create more opportunity for your line when you can be trusted to start a uh, yeah. shift in the defensive zone yeah. because you're not guaranteed yeah. to lose the draw, right? So if he, he and his line mates want more opportunity. I mean, quite often, you, you could end up in a good matchup situation, but the coach pulls you because he doesn't trust you to win a draw. It puts more pressure on dry sidle. Um, on the penalty kill, it puts pressure on dry sidle to have to be out there winning draws. Like It's too important a, a piece – of the game for him not to be paying close attention to it. Oh, hundred percent. And the things you can work on and improve on it, right? You have friends around that'll help you. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to jump in your notable group, I'm going to say that orders were, uh, you know, perfect on the penalty kill. And I, and I know that that is probably um, not very high on people's priority list here, but it is for me because it's been such a challenge for this group to get it done. Um that being like just killing a penalty that to go, you know, to, to, to keep these guys off the score sheet on the penalty kill. Um, I think that's a step in the right direction. Maybe something that they can build off of moving forward. Uh, so the top line ends up being Matthias Janmark to start the game. I'm not going to say that the lines he put together didn't work because, because they lost the team played well and the lines kind of worked. They, they got results. They were in the game. They worked hard. It almost didn't matter to me. The, when I was watching them play tonight, for the first couple of periods, I was like, they were playing a style where the, a lot of the players just kind of looked the same, didn't they? Because they yeah. were skating fast, and they were finishing checks, and they were just kind of line after line was coming out. And it was like, oh, there is a quality that they've captured tonight that they have lacked. So I think his line combinations, generally speaking, worked. With that said... Uh, Janmark gets the pull up to the top line ahead of Holloway. I didn't like that. I think Holloway would have been a good candidate to have gotten that look, would have liked to have seen it. Some varying opinions on the stream here. Your thoughts on Holloway's night and the decision for Janmark to be there. I think what you try to do is try to create four kind of balanced lines. Well, you know, maybe I'll, I'll just hold off on the th fourth line, but I think he was trying to create three balanced lines that kind of had some skill, some hard working, maybe a little defensive awareness. And I think that was what his goal was. And I think for the most part, he did a pretty good job. I would suggest that for most of the game, this is the most energy and legs we've seen from the Oilers. I, I thought they were really skating well. They were all over the ice. Um, there were some really nice moments for checking, um, you know, there was there was a lot of positive take, and we'll, we'll maybe cut it off at the at the end of the second. But I thought their legs were there and going for themselves. I do think that I I'm not as quick to move players up as you are, Shogger, especially young guys. I do think Holloway is in a place where like he had 15 minutes tonight. He got Yamrak had 17, so it's not like they're that far off. But what I liked about it is that he's in a place where the matchups aren't killer, uh, and he can make plays and 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 kind of just grow as a player before they move him up what I believe would be too quickly. Um, I have a lot of faith in what this guy can become, but you, you you can't have one good game and then jump right up to the top line as a rookie. I think you need to build that, that's, that foundation underneath yourself of knowing that you can whoop, play at a certain level and be a certain guy uh, and, and build up that confidence. So I, that's why I think they're keeping him down there. What if you're one of the better players through exhibition and then one of the better players through the first four games who's notably working as harder, harder yeah. than everybody else in driving play and, and really looking yeah. like you're trying to be on the right side of it? What if then, and then yeah. an opening comes open in the top six and you're yeah. a first-round pick and potentially a yeah. top six forward down the road, but they're not sure because you haven't really gotten that look? What if all that stuff? Yeah, I think that's a real positive 
thing of building confidence for them. So mm -hmm. when you have a meetings one-on-one, -on -one, you can bring and say, hot Dylan, you're doing everything we want you to do. Keep doing it. We're really happy with you. Just keep pushing the pace on that line. Like I, you know, to move them up. Cause if, if, you know, if Jan Mark loses his confidence, it's not the end of the world. You know, he's on a one-year contract or whatever he is, or is maybe two, right? It's, it's, it's a manageable deal. This is a guy you have to treat right and grow right. So I like the way they're managing Holloway. I know that won't be popular on the stream, um, but he is a difference maker on that line. Although I think, think tonight was his, I don't think this was his best night tonight. Um, you know, and, 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 but either way, I think that they're trying to build up a foundation of confidence within him. So he's ready for a long-term move up and not a short-term, like we've seen some players in the past. Totally respect your opinion. But what I will say, Struds, is that thinking right there is the exact same thinking that kept Broberg at 916 tonight. That's the exact same thought process, the exact same attitude, the exact same everything. Mm -hmm. Got to recognize what these guys are giving you and be open to the idea that if you're willing to live with a little up and down, give them a little bit more. You need players with these contracts contributing meaningfully. Neither of them got a chance to last year, so they had to go sign guys for more money this year because neither of these guys were given the chance to prove they were ready. And now it's same thing, man. Would have loved to have seen Broberg get a little bit more of a sniff tonight, but it's it's to me it's it's coming from the same place. Yeah, I could see what you're saying. That I mean, I guess where did where did Holloway finish up in the in the forwards for for the top twelve ice times? He had to be yeah, up there. I'm not saying like they played him. He made a conscious yeah. effort to play everybody. So yeah, I credit him for that. Yeah. I mean, it's clear the last right. two games he's wanted to do that. Holloway played 1504 and and he got out there. Yeah, but there was an opportunity. There was a moment in an opportunity and a chance to put him in a spot to say, Hey, we think that you can do this. We want to see if we you can handle this. Or right? you know. You think or you know he can do it because I I I think he could do it in the future. I don't know that he can do it now. I don't think. And honestly, I want to build that platform of strength for him. That that confidence. A long you're investing long term in this player. Um, I I just I I actually I, I'm the more I talk about the more I I completely disagree with any yourself? idea. From him up. <laughs> the more you talk, the more you're yeah. convincing yourself. I yeah, the more I am, I, I sound like I know I'm exactly what I'm talking about. I just we've <laughs> seen in this I market where players move up too quickly. And and I I do hear what you're saying about Bro because I said it earlier. I thought they should have played Broberg more, but there's you know in in that specific moment, what I'm talking about is a guy that can carry the puck, get offensive, and get in there and and do things, and maybe you know create a little bit more ha ha um, havoc for the other group. With with Holloway, um, it's similar, but he was getting minutes already, so I don't think it's quite the same because you know I'm guessing he finished in the top six or seven, eight forwards in ice time, so, mm. somewhere in there, was Broberg was clearly, uh, I'm pretty sure he was the last the last guy. So I think it's it's a different situation when you look at it that way. Philip Broberg should have been put with Matthias Ekholm and Evan Bouchard should have been given sparing shifts for the rest of the game <laughs> after the first seven, eight minutes of that third period. It's time with Bouchard. It's time. This team needs wins. If Broberg is going to show a pulse and like he wants to push, I, I mean, I, listen, I when it was earlier, two, three games we were talking about, right? They're now six games in. These mistakes yeah. are still happening. You read that situation. That guy's going. That guy's making all kinds of costly mistakes. So if there's a power play, you get to go out again. In the meantime, you wanted to see 86 and 14 together. And you know what? They did it for one shift. After Bouchard mm -hmm. made the bad error, they did it for one shift. Mm -hmm. And then they flipped it back. I'd have stuck with it. I think that the next game, I think the the D pairs will be different. I really mm. do. I, I he, he needs to be um he being Bouchard needs needs a break. Just to like I I talk about Holloway. I, I don't think Bouchard has his legs underneath him. I, I think that the yeah. world feels like it's moving really quick underneath him. Um and uh, you know, and he's just he's really having a tough time out there with <laughs> defensive. It doesn't seem to be getting better. By the so way, I, he had a three point night. <laughs> I know, but that's going what's to assist. But, but ah. so, so, so you know what? So let's put it this way: when he has the puck on his stick, he's a very skilled guy. It's when he's away from the puck, and it's a high event night. I mean, you, you can't talk about being on the goal on the ice for eight goals against, or sorry, eight goals total, and not 
Talk about that being a high event night. That's a very, very high event night for, for any player. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of good, you know, when he has the puck on his stick, but it's, you know, how much can you get for that? Like what, what is that value? Is that, is that value? Are you willing to accept that when he has a three point night? Yeah. I mean, he's going to have to, he's going to have to dial it. He, he is not this bad. He played way better at the tail end of last season. He's just off to a tough start and he needs to find yeah. it and he needs to be motivated to find it. Ontario Moms on the stream says all the vets are making mistakes. So who cares if young guys do it too, if there's upside to be discovered, right? Tons of mistakes are being made by the group anyways. Might yeah. as well be giving these younger guys. And, and again, Holloway played pr- decent minutes tonight. I just would have liked to have seen him up there. Sorry, you got to protect their confidence, right? A veteran player has some confidence as a as a track record. Mm-hmm. I, I very I think confidence is a huge thing in a young player. And, and I understand what you're saying, but like just look at Bouchard. Where do you think his confidence is right now away from the puck? It's got to be pretty low, doesn't it? So, and he has he has a few years under his belt. Holloway and Broberg don't. So you got to be careful with that confidence in a young player. All right. That was takeaways brought to you by Redefined Health. Are we going hockey or are we going off the rails in uh, Struddy's world tonight? Bud? Oh, we're going off the rails. We got to lighten this thing up. It's I think just, we it's, do. Yeah. It's heavier than like some pound cake right now. I got to lighten this thing up. Big <laughs> yeah, time. Okay. Let's lighten this pig up. When we come back, ask us anything. Uh, Steve's been taking all your comments on the stream. We got great action happening tonight. We really appreciate everybody contributing. So we'll save a little bit of extra time for Ask Us Anything, and we'll go through a lot of this. But coming up after a very short break, Strutty's World, where we're going to lighten things up just a little, folks. Some, Some lawn tips coming. If you own or operate a business, you know the value of a great employee. Just ask Shogger. Pathfind is here to help you find your next star player to help take your business to the next level. Pathfind can help with recruitment, career transition, leadership coaching. They truly have your whole team covered. Building you a championship caliber roster, find your team's path forward at pathfind.ca. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top-of-the-line track band simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full-service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a z.ca. If you're looking for a night out on the town and want to make sure you and your fellow fun lovers arrive safe and in style, call Ahmed Enterprises. With their stretch limos and party buses, they can accommodate groups up to 22. Servicing Edmonton and area, Ahmed Enterprises provides luxurious, reliable, professional transportation. Whether it be weddings, parties, casino nights, game night at the arena, or any occasion, give them a call at 780-231-6018 or check them out online at ahmedenterprise.com. Mention Got Your Back sent you to get 10% off your luxury ride. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here. Someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy look good. Should I take over here or what? What's that? Should I go or? No, no. We got to do the intro. Well, oh, okay. you, you just couldn't hear the intro in your ear, I don't think. Your your animation was playing. Oh. You're watching the stream, aren't you, Shogger? Oh, did I just get <laughs> caught watching the stream on YouTube and not talking for like yeah. 25 seconds? That's, that's right. exactly and what it's I like. Heard. That's exactly. <laughs> you know what it was? That's so funny. Uh, and Steve, you'll have to edit that out for the audio version yeah, or everyone's going to think that the podcast was over. Sorry about that. You know what it was? So we got a new commercial that ran tonight, one from Ahmed Enterprises and welcome to them, uh, by yes, the way, the newest time. partners here on the podcast. And I hadn't been able to watch the whole thing that Zuby put together. So I was watching it here and I was like, oh, interesting, right. interesting. And then I saw you pop up over there. I was like, oh, whatever. I'm just watching the commercial. So sorry about that, everybody. 
Uh, why did you guys wait so long to reach over and flick know. me in the side of the head? You got to stay in the moment, right? You criticize the orders for not staying in the moment. Here you are. You got, you know, 10 podcasks in. You're flailing around like you uh, should have said something. Well, like, I, it's on my show. I'm, I'm how just long there were you trying to just sit there. Well, so I did. I waited 15 seconds. What do you want me to say? I, I don't know how much. Like, hey, uh, are we going? Should I take over? I love the thought no, you I, came out with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Sorry about that, folks. A bit of a brain cramp there by me. Time for Strutty's World, brought to you by DLR Vinyl Products. Uh, vinyl, fencing, and decking. They got locations in Calgary and Edmonton. They provide beautiful, maintenance-free products. And yes, the key is maintenance-free because they go in once, and then you don't have to sand, you don't have to stain, you don't have to paint. You put it in, you sit on it, you relax, you enjoy it, you look at it. Maintenance-free products are definitely the way to go. Rob runs the branch in Calgary. Rick runs a branch here in Edmonton, dlrvinylproducts.ca. Struds, now you can take over, pal. Do you ever notice that you don't like something and you can't figure out exactly why? And I've, I've had this experience now with rotisserie chicken. I walk into a store and they got a rotisserie chicken. I love the smell of it. I'm like, God, my mouth starts watering. You see the juices dripping off and it comes in that nice case. So I'm the old, I I, I get one. I get one. It's, it's quite often. My wife grabs them. She loves them. Kids love them. Everything's great. But every time I have after, I'm like, God, I didn't really enjoy that experience. And yet I'll go back into the store and I'll smell it up and I'll do it again. So I've done some pretty deep dives into why this is. And I'm trying to figure it out. At first, at first I thought it's because I found the, the chicken dry. And I don't think that's fair because you can have steaks or you can make steaks really dry or whatever, really buddy, whatever it is. So I don't think that's fair because that's just blaming one chef for what he does. But I figured out what it is. I don't like rotisserie chickens because it's too much work. That's right. You heard me heard it. It's too much work. When you get a rotisserie chicken, it's not like a chicken breast or a chicken thigh. There's maybe one bone in a chicken thigh or two. Chicken breast got nothing. It's easy. You just slice into that thing, start putting it in your mouth. You're refueling the body, feeling good about yourself. Rotisserie chicken, it's a job. It's like getting some Lego, except in reverse. You got to take it down rather than build it up. It's a lot of work. Your fingers get stinky. You get that chicken grease smell on your fingers, which is pretty good when it's in the air, but not when you go to, you know, yawn and you smell your hand and it smells like you had it stuck inside a turkey baster for, you know, two years. I decided I'm not banning them from our home, but I've suggested to my wife it might be time for us to move away from the rotisserie chicken and just use something with more, way less bones or boneless completely, like a chicken breast. Guys, I'll stand by and listen to what you have to say, but my days of rotisserie chicken are probably behind me because of the stink fingers. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Strong finish, Struddy. Strong finish there, bud. Uh, Steve, you can hop in here. Uh, so rotisserie chicken is like Lego, but in reverse. I mean, that right there is a level of thought process that only – the beautiful brain of Jason Strudwick can produce. I don't disagree. The work has only begun when you get it home and open the package. And that's annoying. When I pick up yeah. warm food, I want to be able to just rip it open and start eating it. I don't want to have a bunch of work left to do. So from that standpoint, I agree with you, but Steve, like you got a young family too. It is, it's a way to feed your family some warm food without feeling like you're feeding them crap. Right. You're kind of, you didn't have to put in the work to cook it and you feel like it's a little bit healthier. So it's kind of that middle ground. Yeah. That's exactly it. You feel like a little bit of a chef, but it's already prepared for you. You still <laughs> get to carve it up and rip it apart. Yeah. And but it's it, just a smell yeah. thing. Hey, Struds. Oh, the smells. It's crazy good. I love the smell of it. And I, I'm like, I, I, if we came to your house, Steve said, oh, we're having rotisserie chicken. Obviously, I would trip him later on the chat. But I would eat it. Like I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say I'm. I'm not. I, I like it. I just don't want to have to work that hard to put the food in my mouth. Now, if you crack out the lobster, it's a lot of work. But man, it's worth it, right? That's that's the gold in the bottom of the old the old uh, claws, right? So that's a little bit different. Same mm -hmm. with a crab or something like that. Even you know mussels, a little bit harder work, but I can live with it. This, I'm not sure. I think we've been. I think that whole world has been oversold. How often like. do you go to the rotisserie chicken? And, and by the way, is this like, I, I'm assuming you pull your weight in the kitchen enough uh, to be handing these suggestions about what you don't like to Shona. 
Yeah, yeah, probably. Like I probably, well, I don't know. She'd probably have a little different recollection, but I'd say at least once a week I prepare a meal. Okay. You know, and then I'll, my I'll wife, be texting her and checking with this. Yeah, she probably does it three times a week, four times. And the rest of the time we're kind of running between activities with the kids, right? Mm -hmm. um, I turn to a lot of cereal. I'm not gonna lie. Like I get home and I'll, I'll, I'll bang a, some cereal. But I, again, I don't want to hurt the good people that make the rotisserie chicken. I love the smell, but I just wish it was just a big blob of meat and no bones. And I recognize that's probably going to be a challenge uh, genetically to get any chicken to that to that spot. To that you want to cook cook chicken in a can is what you want. <laughs> it's called I spam, do. bud. Yeah. Jam or yeah. whatever, whatever the chicken version is of spam. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, this was the very culinary edition of <laughs> Struddy's World brought to you by DLR Vinyl Products. Let us know what you think on the stream. Uh, don't disappear too much, Steve. We need you for this next segment, if you recall. By the way, the stream didn't disappoint here as I was staring off into blank space. Uh, what happened here? Silence, JL says. Freezer Bag says, wake up. Dr. Gonzo said, lol. Uh, Magic Meat Bag said, <laughs> guys. Uh, someone said, nice shogger. Uh, someone said Shogger with an Oilers line change. <laughs> Reesh paying as much attention as Boosh tonight on the stream. Need to clean Oof. that up. Rashog impersonates the Oilers third period. Hashtag fall asleep. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Time now for our final full segment of the podcast. Ask us anything brought to you by Match Eatery and Public House. Your destination for all the sports action. Big screens, ice cold beer, all your pub favorites perfected. Match Eatery and Public House located adjacent to Rogers Place in the Grand Villa Casino. For more information, check out matchpub.com. Great place to go if you're heading to the game. Stop there for a bite before or a drink after. Really, let, really, really convenient. Let the crowd die off a little before you uh, head in or head out. All right, Steve, it's a big job. We got a really active stream tonight. Let's just start going through some of it. I'll help you out along the way here, but what sure. do you got? Yeah, I mean, just a just a whole bunch of stuff about the Oilers defensive game, obviously. So Boba Fett says most disjointed Oilers team ever. The offseason focus on goal suppression has seen this defense get even worse with flaccid net front defending and gaping holes in high danger areas. Flaccid net front de <laughs> defending. That is a good descriptor. Yeah. Uh, that was freezer bag with a way with words there. That is that Boba who Fett. that was? That was Boba Fett. Oh, that was Boba Fett. Shakespeare. Wow. Flaccid fr net front defending. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely need to tighten it up and, and not have situations where it looked like guys were looking around after. Like when guys are looking around after a goal, kind of like, was I supposed to be there? Who was supposed to be there? We talked a little bit about it, Struds. At what point do you abandon a new idea? Like, at what point do you go, oh, yeah, man. it's just not working, got to move on? I'm not saying it's time, it, yeah, but there I, will come a time. Well, I, you got to give it time to 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 take hold, right? And you, you, six games is not enough for it to take hold. Um, you know, you, if you truly believe this is the way forward, you just plow through it. Because it, it, if it's going to come out the other side, it's going to be better off. So, I think six games is would be would be really early to to, to bail out of this situation, um, because I don't really feel like it's a you know they've they've worked on their neutral zone for or four check and defending. I don't think that that's really caused them a lot of grief right now. It is mm -hmm. just that D zone coverage is just it seems like it's very loose. Um, and I, and unfortunately I think there's two ways you got to get past it. You got to work on it in practice and you got to watch video and you might have to sacrifice a couple games with really hard practices to kind of get it dialed into guys' brains. So it's just a, it's a reaction rather than you're thinking like you're talking about. Martin Ferguson says, I wonder what 65,000 people booing sounds like looking ahead to the Heritage Outdoor game. And if the Oiler fan is still feeling this unsatisfied, leads into another question from Braden Johnson. Hard to blame a system when there's a complete lack of effort. Uh, are we talking effort here, Struds, in the third period? Was it effort? Or are we talking execution and mental errors again with a group of guys that are fundamentally trying hard? They were through 40. 
Yeah. Well, my buddy Low Tide, uh, you know, again, he tweeted something that about I'd said that I really liked in the previous podcast. But you know, I, I do believe that no matter the system you're gonna you're gonna use, there's got to be a a real determination to be very hard defensively to, to to not beat. So let's just review some of the basic premises of of being a good defending team. One, you stay between your man and the net at all times. The goal we're talking about from Erickson Eck, there was no one between him and the net, right? So that's that's a basic premise. Um, you know, Kareel, the what the um was it? I think it was the hmm. doesn't matter. Like a, yeah. Well, where where Nuge doesn't go, doesn't doesn't stay between um Kaprasov Kaprasov and, and Kaprizov the net. made Kaprizov, the play on right. the wall and yeah. stepped around him. Not between yep. him. That's not staying between him and the net. Like all those things, like these are really basic premises. So you can talk about the system wise, but these are basic things you have to know and and really follow as a group. You know, stick on puck. That's another thing. You know, you get your stick on the puck, try to poke that puck away and make it difficult behind them. Like those are all real basic rules that you have. And 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 oftentimes you see the owners kind of get away from those, right? So it, you gotta have those basic ideas. Then you work your your system with a lot of determination and then you got a chance but i don't think they've had all three phases going um for sure not this year steve uh yeah so thomas and uh, on a positive note said uh 36 and 37 so campbell and fogel had tremendous games not sure what 37 did over the summer but he, he looks much quicker this season i mean i don't think foot speed has ever been an issue for for warren yeah. fogel i've always liked his speed but can't argue with how fast he looks this season uh, he's been one of their more consistent, harder working forwards, but the bar has been low. Let's be honest. Warren Fogel skates hard and finishes a few checks and doesn't cough anything up, and that's a good night for him. Now he's producing offense, Struds, and this is one of the things we talked about. That third line, Holloway, McLeod, Fogel, and I know they weren't necessarily uh, together as a line. Those are players that need to contribute. So, I mean, a two-goal night is great, but offensive contribution should be expected from these players every few games. Yeah, there's got to be a you know some push from those guys to make it happen, um, and I I would like to think that when when everything settles down when Connor gets healthy again, assuming everyone else is healthy, I'd like to see those three guys back together again. I, I thought they were good, you know, and then you know Fogel can get maybe another touch or two, and maybe one of those other guys can score. They can build a little confidence going into you know when when Connor when McDavid gets back. Like I I think that line there's something there with their speed and size. Uh, and hopefully the physicality we'll see from all three of them, but definitely off the wings. Anders Svensson says, Woodcroft has his favorites. Unfortunately, Broberg doesn't seem to be one of them. No matter how bad the rest of the D play, uh, Broberg plays the least out of all of them. Do you think that Jay Woodcroft, I mean, all in, all coaches have their favorites. It, I think it's just human nature. Do you view Woodcroft as a guy who is subject to his favorites in these decision-making? Process. Well, every, everybody is, every, mm -hmm. you know, anyone and anywhere who's in, who's totally impartial. I, I I've yet to meet that person, um, but I think when you're sitting back and looking at it, when your team is struggling, you go with people that have been there before, right? I think that's and it's hard to break in somebody new, uh, even though it seems quite clear, especially in the third today. Like the third today, and this is nothing against Vinny Darnay. He should not be out there when you're trying to get back in the game. Great point. Steve? Uh, Obi Fuan said, rinse and repeat from the 17-18 season. After we lost to the Ducks, all the Vegas odds people and uh, voices picked the oil as sports center favorites, or Stanley Cup favorites. They kept uh, their cool losing through the first month, and they never turned it around. Does this feel yeah. reminiscent? 17-18. Yeah, in some way. I mean, expectations were not this high coming out of that season into the next one. Not anywhere near where they are right now. That's the thing that's interesting, Strudz, is this is the first time that this group has faced this type of expectation, whether they pay attention to what's said externally or not, right. they have that expectation internally as well, and everybody knows it. And I, I can't help but think we're watching a group struggling to get comfortable and come to terms with that expectation and not let it affect, you know, I'm not sure whether it's when they get down, if the pressure's on. I'm, I'm not sure how it manifests itself in a game that they just want to win, but it feels like a group that hasn't been able to get comfortable with that level of expectation 
Yeah, and I, I like I, I said a previous podcast. I, I think they're looking too far ahead. I still think that that is that's something. And now they're trying to you know get their legs underneath them, and it's hard because other teams are looking at today. Like they, everyone wants to beat someone who thinks they're going to be a Stanley Cup champion. Everyone loves it. They, they, they just want to put you in your place. So I do believe that there's um, been some 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 challenges here with with understanding where they're at with their game. But you know what? You can you can have a thousand meetings, and I I, I actually kind of like meetings when they're productive. But if your meeting is rehashing the same thing, it's not good. You know, maybe maybe you're getting close to a, a players' meeting where you sit down and say, guys, what what are we doing? What are, what do we want to be known for? And let's go out and show that we can do these two or three things. Because right now it's it's very hit and miss. Are they doing that while Connor's away? No way, no way. So yeah. Connor would have to be involved. But I mean, it. it Let's say that they lose the next two games, you know, and then then you know, do they have a meeting on the Monday or Tuesday? Like Connor is still there; he's still the captain, right? It's not like he's gone away. There, you, you know, you, we can talk about it's a slow start, but a slow start can creep into a slow first quarter of the season pretty damn quick, right? You know, because that what are they at six games now? They lose the next two. You're at eight games. You're that's at ten percent of your 10% season. Ten percent of your season, man. So that's sixteen points that are, are you're, you have three on. And I'm not suggesting they aren't going to get points in the next two, but you got to start looking. Okay, we're 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 getting into a you know a danger zone here where we have to start banking some points. It seems like after one point five years with every coach this team has had the last ten years, the players stop listening. Says Spade, is it a leadership issue? I don't get the sense that, you know, I think the players believe in Jay Woodcroft. I think his results in the time that he's been he's been here have shown them that they need to believe in him. I don't think everything he's tried has worked. I think there's probably some stuff that annoys certain guys. I think every coach has that. I don't view it, though, as an issue uh, It's uh, of a room that has stopped believing in or listening to a coach or buying a system or something like that. I think that's premature, Strud's. Very premature. You know, yeah. I know that in, in uh, Ottawa, there was a chance to fire their coach, DJ Smith, right, uh, at, at points of this game they had tonight. I just think that you, you got to get these guys working through their their issues. Um, but it's got to happen pretty quick. Like, we're not – I'm not saying that we're in the must-win territory, but, you know, because it, it – it, it, Unfortunately, when you're in a rut, it sometimes takes you quite a while to dig out of it. It's time to go on a run. Like when Connor gets back, they need to go on like a 15 out of 19 games kind of run. And they need to do that multiple times this season to be able to get back where they want to be. Well, well, let's talk about so what, what areas do they have to address? I think penalty killing, five on five defending, and then kind of balance and energy through all their lines. Like those are the three things I, I just off the top of my head. And a little generic, but those that's the areas. Yeah. And D, yeah, D zone coverage for sure, figuring out what they're doing in their own end and how to cut back on those mistakes. I think um I think it's time for accountability to become more of a priority than it has been so far. Yeah, so I understand like, starting yeah. a season and giving everybody a bit of time, but the DEF CON level is changing here and it's time for accountability. I mean, you saw they were benching guys in Jersey a couple of yeah. games in. It's time for Jay Woodcroft to start dropping some hammers on guys. Yeah, I, I think I think you're there. I think you're there. Um, Completely. Should have started tonight. Well, I, let's see what the lines look like, right? And, and I guess specifically uh, the D lines, yeah. deep bearings. Yeah. Steve, one more, buddy, and then we'll wrap this thing up with our gem of the day. Well, Zuby with a late entry for gem of the day. Oh, Zuby. Zuby's oh, on the stream commenting. Didn't show up for work, <laughs> but then decides to jump Soft. in for the fun part on the stream. <laughs> Fine. Go ahead. What's he saying? He says, the good thing about the Heritage Classic setup is that anyone throwing a jersey won't make it to the ice. <laughs> oh, Zuby. That's not helpful. He's, he's in here making another play yeah. for gem of the night late. What was that crap he did last podcast trying to get Gem of the Night? Who did he do an impersonation of? Yeah, I don't even. Do you guys remember? He tried to do an impersonation trying to make a stab at Gem of the Night. Oh, Rob Schneider. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> it wasn't even that good. <laughs> it wasn't that good. Yeah. 
Steve, yeah. do you do any impressions? Do you want a quick <laughs> no, late stab here at Gem of the Night? Come on, not, bud. This is not impression night right now. No, no. No, you're not, you're not willing to try anything. You don't want to. I remember one up time. There, like... I remember one time Shogger that we uh, worked in the same uh, like essentially broom closet back in Rexall Place, and yes. and you had just built this, uh, um, you know. Uh, soundproof dome for you to record your voice right stuff i remember that game yeah, and building. you were and you weren't there one day and i went in and did my impression of you <laughs> after the game oh, really? and parker was quite impressed I got oh it. really yeah. do yeah. tell yeah let's hear it then, I, it's, it's not Steve. it's not in me right now oh why wow. yeah. why'd you bring it up the oilers i know you know a t- another tough one for the Oilers is that you know there's a lot of a lot of air coming back from it. It's a, there's a pitch. I nailed it that night. I could probably never a, do it again. A sore back. <laughs> a sore back. Ouch, my back hurts. All right, that was Ask Us Anything, brought to you by Match Eatery and Public House. Great night on the uh, in the comments section and on the YouTube stream here. So thank you to everybody who contributed. Time now for our gem of the day. We'll call it Gem of the Night, brought to you by Edmonton's most iconic home for everything sport. You know them, you love them. Look at that logo. United Sport and Cycle, Gem of the Day. It is definitely your home for hockey. Sticks and skates, masks and pads. They can get you outfitted and ready to dominate on the ice. Go check them out in store, or you can see them online, www.unitedsport.com. .ca. Struddy, what is the gem of the day today, sir? I, I think we got to hear from the coach and uh, paraphrasing would basically say, you no, know, obviously we have to look at some of our defensive zone, but we also have to look at some of our attacking and the way, and, and, and I think talking to power play. Um, I thought that was really interesting. And it's, it's obviously he knows what's going on, but it's quite a uh, uh, self-aware assessment of what they're doing, right? If they could have got some of those power plays, I think they had four, uh, four in the first or four in the first half of the game. They could have got a little more juice in that. I think they would have been better off. Uh, maybe maybe put this one away earlier. Yep. Yeah, there was a lot that went wrong defensively, but it was a night where they had the opportunity to... to yeah, that might have been a death blow, right? If they if they end up getting one there, yeah. Yeah. maybe would have opened up a little more breathing room for some mistakes later. Weren't able to open up that multi-goal lead that could have maybe let them play a little bit of a different right. way. Right. So, uh, but man, disappointing night. Uh, disappointing night for Jack Campbell too, more than anything tonight. Strud's like, he really found something in that second period. That second what? period was something from him. Yeah, I, I don't think the score reflects what he did tonight. Unfortunately, the stats are what they are. All right, that was our gem of the day brought to you by United Sport and Cycle. That'll wrap up the podcast, folks. We're going to drop another one, I think, Thursday after the Rangers game. You know what I have on Thursday, bud? What's that? Jury duty. Oh, geez. What are you Out doing? Out of the blue. Good for I, I you. I don't know. I, I got to go down, and I, I don't even know what to expect. Put me on a jury. I don't know. Did they put, did they put journalists on jury? Oh, jury like, duty. I thought you said a charity duty. No, oh, jury, jury. Duty. Okay, yeah. I heard jury you. duty. Yeah. All right, you're going to be sequestered for months. This is going to be finally it'll just be me. Me, Zuby and Steve. <laughs> this thing can finally Yeah, Brownie. Don't forget Brownie too. Oh, oh yeah. Who? No, he's out. <laughs> the second you're out, he's out. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I may or may not be with you on Thursday. Maybe I'll okay. be locked in a room making important right. decisions. Right. Yeah, Tell you this, if it. I'm going to be on a jury, I'm bloody well going to be the foreman. I'll tell you that right now. I don't oh. know who has to vote or how I get elected, but yeah. I'm going to be the foreman. That's for sure. Can't wait to hear what you wear there. Let us know. Take a picture. <laughs> what I choose to wear. All I right. think that's it. I, I was just, I would be fascinated. What does someone wear to jury duty? You got to head down to Mr. Dirk's, get something nice, nice and yeah. fresh, you know? Yeah. Fair point. All right. Thanks for listening in, folks. Really appreciate all the action on the stream tonight. Big thanks to all of our sponsors as well, including our amazing title sponsors, Sherwood Buick GMC. Thank you to all of our fantastic viewers and listeners as well. Remember to like and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube and you're enjoying it, if you subscribe and you hit the little little bell, you'll get a notification every time we're doing a live stream. Follow us on our socials as well. Leave us a review on iTunes. We'll chat in a couple of days, maybe. Cheers.